loved this venue since I played it for the first time. <laughs> it's, but, it's, but you have to understand, in me saying that, yeah. I've played probably well over 150 venues, and I've seen the worst of the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen venues that aren't venues, but claim to be. <laughs> like the deli. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we played a venue in, in uh, Indianapolis where it was, it was literally like a, a mom and pop shop that you would set up like a boutique stuff or whatever in, but it was converted to where it had a stage and a PA. By the way, I don't do cuts in my interviews, so don't okay. fuck up. <laughs> I've had in three years, I've only had to cut one interview, and that it was. Who was it with? <laughs> it was um, with it was a Skyver interview, but it wasn't their fault because one of the guys from Echo Block was in the background, and you can't trust Rob Gnarly with anything. <laughs> I'm just okay. gonna put that out there. Anyways, <laughs> this is LJ for Drift and Die Press. And today we have, for the first time three years ago that you guys were here, well, that you were here, Farewell My Love yeah, is back it's, it's at hurt. the garage. Back at the garage. I don't, <laughs> I don't think you have to introduce yourselves anyways, but I'm going to make you do it. Hi, I'm Chad Cole, and I sing. London McCuffey, I play guitar. All right, so I always say it's harder for me to interview bands that I actually know because I know the answers to your, lot of your questions, but what's been the worst tour nightmare that's happened so far? This tour. This tour nightmare. <laughs> oh man. I'd say Albuquerque was pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, why yeah. is that? Because we were literally driving, and we were five minutes from the venue, and the tire flew off of the trailer also, with the wheel well. Also, to top it all off, <laughs> we were literally probably less than a minute away from the venue, and we were pulling up to a stoplight, and someone literally tried to walk into our vehicle. <laughs> literally. <laughs> and and then yeah. five minutes after that, the tire blew. <clears throat> so I, I think he was like warning us, like maybe if, turn think, back now. yeah. Thinking back, he may not even have been a real person. It might have just been a ghost, like warning us of what was coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an angel said to warn us. Yeah, as much as we were like, what's going on, man? At the moment, so what are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely not this tour, probably. Or um, it was, it's a funny nightmare, but we played a venue in Ringgold, Georgia. And uh, it, I remember that venue. It, it, it's okay. <laughs> no names need to be mentioned. Just, just the, just the story. Um, we showed up, and there was no promoter, and there was no sound guy. But the promoter showed up later and said, "Hey guys, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I couldn't get my shift covered at Walmart, <laughs> and was still in his Walmart outfit." That has to be a nightmarish story but probably one of my favorite stories of ever playing live it's, it's funny in hindsight <laughs> yeah. we also played another venue um <laughs> in the south where there was a gigantic staircase and so you can imagine with heavy gear uh that was so yeah top three right and somebody probably. count the stairs there's like 24 i believe <laughs> yeah but they were like steep stairs with like this much to step on so i mean it was, most like, it was like a ship most venues here are that way, aside from this one. So, was it a really old venue? Oh yeah, it was. It, it looked like it had survived. <laughs> it survived the Civil War. <laughs> I keep looking at side because it just looks like shit's about like the plants are about to blow out of the, ground. out of the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. luckily everyone that's in this venue right now is safe from the outside massacre that's probably about to happen. Oh, man. Enjoy <laughs> nice music. Yeah. That's yeah. correct. There is a police station across the street, too. There you go. So in case this is an alien invasion, they can hopefully come over and help out. What is with you guys and aliens? The last time I saw you, you were talking about really? aliens. It was Robbie that was. I feel like I never talk about aliens, and maybe just like, maybe Minnesota just brings it out of me. No, that was Ringgold when Robbie was talking about aliens. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's just a good coincidence, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so the new album came out, what was that, May? July 22nd. I'm glad that you can remember. Oh, no. Yeah. I have so many albums that have come out constantly that I have to hear. Um, so right now, what has been your favorite song to play off of it? Um, luckily, I think each of us enjoy the record front to back. So luckily, we're not, there's not any songs on it where we're just like, oh, my God, we're just dreading it. I think all of us enjoy them. Um, and from speaking to other members and stuff too, I think each of us have different favorites for different nights and different different favorites for different portions of the tour. But um, I would say overall, I love playing Maybe I. That's like my baby on the record. 
everything off the record is in moderation and in context. So I can love playing a song like Burn Out the Night, which is on the heavier side of the album, just as much as, as Maybe I, which is on the more uplifting, positive side. Um, I like Burn Out the Night because it's really demanding guitar-wise and has like a ripping solo. But overall, I'd say Never Stop and Maybe I. Yeah, most consistent. All right. So our stable question that we always have to ask bands, what is the weirdest or most fucked up thing you've ever saw on a drive? On a drive? Probably the guy walking <laughs> into you trying to walk into our vehicle. Um, you've been touring a lot longer, so you probably have a much different answer for this. Anything that's fucked up, I can't say on camera. So, <laughs> I'm going to go with the guy walking in front of the car, or, um, he was held yeah, 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 he because he, he literally, like, it, we were, like, about to merge onto a freeway, I, I'm about to get off onto the freeway, and he literally walked with purpose in front of the car, like, we had to swerve out of the way, like, had we not swerved, we would have killed that And then dude. as the front of the vehicle passed him, he tried to walk into the I side, <laughs> so he's just, like, determined. Yeah, he's just he was very uh, inspired <laughs> that night. I feel like I've heard a lot of bands at some point have had an encounter with somebody that was just fucking crazy. Yeah, and there was one guy, I'll, I'll, I'll tell this story, this is years ago. We played, I don't know if you were there, but it was in Marietta, Georgia at Swayze's. That was way before I was Before, going <laughs> Yeah, okay, but the there was a guy there, I'm not going to name his name, but he literally freaked out took every trash can in the venue and threw it all to the ground in his own venue, destroyed his own venue, and then kissed his brother on the mouth. And that's, that was the night. And also <laughs> tried to pull a knife on the tour manager. <laughs> was he on drugs or something, or was that just, did that just happen? I, I, I don't know. I didn't ask, like, hey, man, you all right? And I was just like, fuck this. I'm out of here. <laughs> Those kind of situations where you kind of <coughs> hope that they were on drugs and that somebody wasn't doing that out of their sound mind. Right. Man, I'm so tired tonight. My brain's just like out of questions to ask. <laughs> well, I, I've asked you guys so many questions too over the years because I think this is like counting the torch interview number five. Yeah, I'd say so. Somewhere in there. And somehow Robbie has not ended up in any of those interviews. <laughs> Was that the door or my phone that freaked you out? Wait, is that the door that's making the like the ghostly oh, noises? Please. No, that's my phone. It is? Oh. It's actually every time he opens the door, your phone goes off. <laughs> so there's like like demons about to come in the room. <laughs> Join them all. Actually got some throat cut myself. Nice, dude. Actually, when London texts me, my phone howls like wolf, and that freaks people out so bad if it happens in the middle of interviews. Wolves. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, is there anything else you would like to leave with your fans? Um, I would say that. This tour that we did was primarily East Coast and Midwest, and we are currently working on a run for the West Coast for spring. And um, yeah, so just stay tuned on all social media. You might actually have to type in Feral My Love on social media as Reach is um, absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, um, there will definitely be more tour news coming soon and more music videos, and more everything. So just be sure to stay tuned to our social media sites, and you will be the first to know when things drop. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Did I make the interview? <laughs> Can you miss someone you never met? I crave thinking about the wasted breath, the wasted youth that wasted on you. How can you miss someone so quick to forget? Illogical and separate, so easy when you're desperate for evidence. By everything in action, I like to play the game like the screen. Liberate humanity. I know I shouldn't take it personal. I know. Take it 